Number one gives us a table of two different types of tickets being bought for a play that was performed in either the afternoon and the evening, and it would like for us to apply the addition rule, which is that the probability of event A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus B minus the probability of A and B. Um, so in this case, our first event is that a child's ticket is bought. Okay, so the probability um, of this children's ticket being bought. And then the second event is the probability that it was performed in the afternoon. So an afternoon ticket here. So we wrote this out with um, A being the child's ticket and B being the afternoon. It would look like this. So the probability of a child's ticket or the afternoon would be equal to the child probability of a child ticket plus the probability of an afternoon show minus the probability of the child's ticket and the afternoon show. So one thing to note here is if we add all four of these numbers together, the total in um, tickets sold is 363. So if we were to take a look at um, the probability of the child's ticket, so if you totaled up the children's tickets, that's going to be 48 total tickets. So the probability of a child's ticket is going to be 48 out of 363. And then we will add on the probability of an afternoon show. So the afternoon show is 36 plus 127, which is 163. So that's going to be a probability of 163 out of 363. And then we'll subtract the probability of both the child's ticket and the afternoon. So children's tickets for the afternoon show, which is right here at 36. Um, so 36 out of 363. And the reason that we subtract that is because that 36 ends up being counted twice in here. It was counted in both the orange children's ticket and the afternoon. And so if we were to just look at this table and count up just the numbers that are in the afternoon or child's ticket spaces, we could do 12 plus 36 plus 127, and we would end up with seeing that that's 175 out of 363. And if you were to do 48 plus 63 minus 36, you would also end up with that 175 out of 363. Number two, a biologist studies two different invasive species, purple loosestrife and the common reed, at sites in both wetland and coastal habitat, habitats. The probability of the purple um, loosestrife is present in 35% of the sites, and the common reed is present in 55% of the sites. And then both the purple loosestrife Okay, so purple and the common reed both show up in 23% of the sites. So this gives us, you know, the probability of each separately, and then they, they can happen together. So we would use that addition rule, the probability of purple plus the probability of the reed minus where they both show up, since that would end up getting counted twice. So we'd have 35% plus 55% minus 23%, and that would give us 67% where either or happens. All right, and number three, it says 30 teachers and students participated in a student faculty basketball game as a fundraiser. They surveyed the students and the results are shown below um, in this table. So there were people that were younger than 18, people that were 18 to 30, people that were older than 30, and whether or not they stretched before the game. So one of the sports medicine students, Han, wants to know the probability that one of the participants in the game selected at random is younger than 18. Okay, so we want the person to be younger than 18 or that they stretched before the game. So if they hit, if they um, satisfy either or both of these conditions, they're fine. So, or they stretched before the game. So stretched before the game is this top row. 
And um, so to figure this out, he adds the values for stretched before the game, five plus nine plus four, um, which is 18. And then he also did the 18 year olds or younger than 18. So five plus 10 and had 15 added those two numbers together and got 33 out of 30, but then said that number is higher than one. So probability cannot be more than a 100% chance. So he knows he did something wrong. So what did he do wrong and explain your reasoning? And so the error comes here in these five people that got counted twice. So they got counted as younger than 18 and also stretching for the game. So counted five people twice. So how would we use, how does the addition rule help us not do this? And so the addition rule actually subtracts off. Okay, so subtracts um, where both things happen at the same time. So subtracts the probability of A and B once so that it doesn't get counted twice. So here he counted this category, which is the probability of A and B, counted it the first time and the second time. And so addition principle has you subtract it off once so that you don't count it twice. Number four, two classes of elementary school students were asked what activity they want to do during recess. Each student selected one recess option, so they can only be in one category at a time, and the table summarizes the re recess preference for each student. So what is the probability? Um, and so if we're doing probability, let's figure out the total here. So we've got class A is two, nine, 18 people. So there's 18 people in class A. Seven plus 10 is 17 plus five is 22. So there's a total of 40 students. And so part A says, what's the probability that a student selected at random plays tag? Okay, so now we want to figure out how many people play tag. And so there are nine people out of the 40 surveyed that play tag. So that would be the probability. What is the probability that a student selected at random prefers to play tag or they play kickball or they prefer to play kickball? Okay, so either or would count. So we've got nine people that prefer tag, and we also have 14 people that prefer kickball. So if we added those together, so nine plus 14 out of the um, 40 students. So 23 total students prefer either tag or kickball. Um, what is the probability that a student in class A, so we know that the student is in class A, so that narrows down what we're looking at here. So we are only looking in class A. So what is the probability that a student in class A plays kickball? Okay, so just class A that plays kickball would be nine students out of 18. What is the probability that a student selected at random is in class B? So a student out of the whole survey is in class B and prefers to play tag. So what's the probability that they're in B and prefer tag? And that's seven students out of the 40 surveyed. Number five. A student picks a random letter from the word dog and a random letter from the word barks. How many outcomes are in the sample space? So you can um, figure this out in multiple ways. Maybe you have a shortcut. Um, maybe you're going to just think about how much D. Okay, so if I picked D, it would go with each of these five. Then we would do O with each of these five, which would be 10, and G with each of these five, which would be 15. Maybe you wrote out the whole sample space, um, but hopefully you came up with 15. I also wrote out the whole sample space. So we have D with B-A-R-K-S, O with B-A-R-K-S, and G with B-A-R-K-S. 
So what is the probability that an O is chosen? So O is chosen in this whole row here. So that's five out of 15, or it's one out of three. What's the probability that K is chosen? Okay, so K is here. It's one out of five letters of that word, which that pattern holds true the whole time. It's going to be 3 out of 15 total, which would simplify to 1 fifth. And then what's the probability that O and K are both chosen? So that only happens once out of the 15 total options. Number six, the table shows information about a survey of resting heart rate and beats per minute of 200 college students. Um, that are in the marching band and, and who are not in the marching band. Create a two-way table that shows relative frequency for each of these values. So you're just figuring out how many times, what's the like percent that it happened out of the 200 students that were surveyed. So you're going to take each of these numbers and divide them by 200 and create a table. So I just copied and copied this table down here. And then we're going to put these numbers in. So 56 um, divided by 200 is 0.28. 28 divided by 200 um, is 0.14. 84 divided by 200 is 0.42. 66 divided by 200 is 0.33. 50 divided by 200 is 0.25. 116 divided by 200 is 0.58. 122 divided by 200 is 0.61. 78 divided by 200 is 0.39. And 200 divided by 200 is 1 because it's 100% of the people in the survey. So what is the probability that a person surveyed, so anybody in this survey selected at random, has a heart rate above above 80 and is in the marching band. Okay, so let's find above above 180 and is in the marching band. Um, oh, sorry, and it said or. Okay, so or in the marching band. So if it's in any of these spaces, it counts. So if they are in the marching band or have a heartbeat over 80, so we've got 0.14 plus 0.25, Okay, that's the people above 80. And then also in the marching band um, is 0.28. And when we total those up, we get that is 67% of the people surveyed or 0.67 frequency. So what is the probability that they have a heart rate below 80? Okay, so below 80 and they are not in the marching band. So below, um, below 80 would be here. Okay, and we want not in the marching band. So not in the marching band is down here. And now it's an and, so it has to satisfy both of these. And so that's going to be just this 0 0.33 is people who are in both, both not in the marching band and have a heart rate below 80. All right, then number seven says the circle has been divided into congruent sectors. So we see three of them. What is the central angle of the shaded region? So we've got two of our three parts shaded. And so we've got two thirds of the whole circle and we want it in radians. The entire circle is two pi. So if we do two thirds of two pi, that will be four pi over three radians. 